Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Aaron Pirelli. I, uh, I do a lot of bass fishing tournaments in the Northeast, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about the Chatterbait. Now, I know you guys are getting hung up on all these different types and brands out there. Don't get hung up on it, okay? Keep it real nice and simple like I do. What I like to do is I like to use the Z-Man Chatterbait Original and the Z-Man Chatterbait Elite. Now, the difference between the two is you have your Chatterbait Elite series. It has a new snap on the front, if you can see that. It's got a little bit of a circle, comes through. The, guy, the guys really do like it. For some reason, I don't really like it. I don't get used to it yet. Um, I like to take that off and switch it over to a Danielson size number three dual lock snap in black coated, okay? You can get any of these things here at Tackle Warehouse or Bass Pro Shops or, you know, um, uh, Northern Bass Supply, wherever you want to go, you can get all these items right here. What I like to do though is I like to change this out, put it on the Chatterbait, put it on that blade, and what you have also on the Chatterbait Elite Series is you have this new bait keeper that holds your soft plastics. It's an awesome idea, you know. It's great. It's a little bit better than what you have with the older, um, the older model. The older model, this one's a little bit trimmed up, but the older model did not have that hook keeper, and look at the hook difference. Look at the size of this hook, and look at the new Gamagatsu hook they put in there. Put them up side by side, hold them right at the tips. That's a little bit longer and a little bit meatier, and it's an excellent, excellent uh, upgrade. I like it a lot. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick in a little while that I think you guys are gonna be like, wow, it's actually pretty cool, and I've been using it for a little while now, and it works, the baits don't get tangled up, it doesn't get in your way, um, I like to use it during everything, just fun fishing or tournaments because it really helps. Now, when I'm fishing water, I like to keep it very simple. If it's going to be muddy water, a little stained water, I like to go with the chartreuse and white, okay? With the blade, obviously, I snap, I uh, change the swivel, okay? I change the snap on it. I want to go right to that dual lock snap again. I don't like those other ones. For some reason, I think the actual dual lock snap gives off a little bit more vibration, a little bit more wobble. And it really makes that lure sing in the water. And um, you, I mean, you can have any types of soft plastics you want to use as a trailer. Uh, my top three or top four, um, I'm starting to love these new gamblers. The Gambler Easy, Little Easy, and Big Easy uh, swim bait. It is unbelievable. That tail, I mean, look at that tail. That tail throbs like there's no tomorrow. And when that's coming through the water, they see that and chase it and they just eat that thing up, you know? Uh, another bait I like to use, keep this one secret. It's one of my favorites. When I'm matching up my green pumpkin series, anytime I use a green pumpkin, okay, and clear, and this is now, this is in clear water. If I'm using uh, clear water baits, I wanna switch over to green pumpkin with a, uh, with a dark head. Uh, if it has a black blade, that's fine. If it has a shiny blade, if you want to add paint to it or use a Sharpie, I know you guys are all on that whole Brett Height kick, which I'm not taking anything from. The guy's probably the best chatterbait fisherman in the country, if not the world. But uh, fishing up here in the Northeast, it doesn't seem like it matters to the fish that much. I mean, we're not really going down to Florida or Texas or California and getting those big, big slobs that uh, see that flash or they want that preference. So I'm using a little bit more uh, finesse type style uh, jigs and baits and chatterbaits and whatnot. So. When you have that, that, that green pumpkin in that clear water, it works phenomenal. But the bait that I like to use with it is a Reactions Innovation Little Dipper. That puppy on this bait is so compact, but I mean, it looks phenomenal. Now, let me show you how to rig this on, okay? You put your bait upside down, okay? When you got your bait upside down, you line it up. I usually count the ribs. I'm looking at it. Boom. Where I see it comes through is about there. What I'll do is I'll just make a little pinhole, a little pinhole point with my lure so I know to come out at that hole right there, okay? Now watch this go on. You just put it on, feed it through, follow that pinhole, there's the pinhole, push it up, push it on that keeper. Man, did that work out nice. Look at that bad boy. You tell me that thing's not ready for the water? Now, I'm gonna show you something really cool. 
I don't show this to many people, but I think it's gonna help you with your soft plastics in the long run, okay? Now, it doesn't matter which soft plastic you use. Like I said, I use the Gambler, the uh, Easy Green Pumpkin. I use the Big Easy, okay? I love Havoc Grass Pigs, okay? Havoc Grass Pigs work awesome also. I mean, they, they're a little bit softer, so sometimes when they nip at the tail, they'll, they'll hit hard. I mean, just look at that grass pig. That's insane, you know? And another bait I like to use big time are these swimming caffeine sheds, the green pumpkin swimming caffeine shed. Absolutely phenomenal baits. But now I'm going to show you the trick of all tricks. Everybody likes to use a little bit of crazy glue up at the top. Now, when you know the crazy glue, when you do it to the tip, when it pulls, it'll tend to pull from the tip and rip a little bit of that tip off, okay? The skirt comes down, everything comes off the bait. You got your you got your lure, your lure comes down after you make a cast and it's like this, or the skirt's down with it and it's down like that and it has a turn. I'm gonna teach you a little something that I like and believe me, it doesn't change the action on the bait. It doesn't, it won't roll differently and throbs. It keeps that bait up there with friction like you wouldn't believe and it's what I call, believe it or not, the asshole factor. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Why, why would he call it that, you know? Because when I show it to you, you're going to be like, is this guy an asshole? You know? Watch. You take your bait. You take yourself a little tiny four-inch zip tie. You can get these on eBay if you want. Four-inch zip ties in black or you get them in four-inch white for your white baits. Now, when you put these on, what you should do is start it first, okay? You start your zip tie. Then, what I want you to do is, I want you to feed it over the bait. When you feed it over the bait, okay? You feed it through the bait, get the tail through, okay? This is the most important part right here, okay? You line it up straight, you put it back, you stand it up. You want that little knot right there on the back side of where that hook comes up. Now, even if you're using a Chatterbait original, you don't even have to worry about the hook keeper or not the hook keeper. This baby zip tied up all the way to the top, okay? Keep it straight still though. Don't let it come down on you. You zip it in, line it up, get it real, real tight. Gotta make sure you're at the top, keep it at the top. There you go, keep it at the top. Boom. That bait right there, and let me take my nail clippers, okay? Take my nail clippers and crimp off right to that piece. Now you would think there's gotta be something wrong with that. There's not. You got the knot right directly behind the head and in front of the blade. Whatever's coming through like this and shaking and wobbling, is deflecting anything that's gonna get that little tiny, tiny, tiny little nip you got on there. When I say you can pull on this thing until the cows come home, it's not gonna come off, okay? And it's one of the best kept secrets besides gluing it up there with the crazy glue, because I know everybody likes to use the crazy glue. I've been using this for about a year now. And when I tell you it works, it works dynamite on any soft plastic you keep it on. I mean, I'll put on Zoom Speed Craws on the end of this. I'll put, uh, you know, uh, Swim Sankos, all that stuff, you know. I mean, I watch Brett Height constantly to see what he's doing with his baits, you know. And he is absolutely the master at working this thing. I mean, slow rolling it, bouncing it off rocks, bouncing it off bottoms, through the grass. And I mean, this baby comes through the grass like you wouldn't believe the original Chatterbait. Now, when I get hung up a lot... What I do is I let it, I'll let it sink. As soon as I come in through the grass and I know I just came through a good patch, but it's real heavy and I know I'm not going to get the pull in order for it to break through and feel that thump again. I kill it. I just let it die. And when it dies down, all that heaviness goes with it. All the grass and all the seaweed comes down with it. And I start it up again. It actually like pulls out. Like it just wants to pull out of itself. Start it up real fast again. After you let it sink for a couple seconds, just go one, two, three, boom, start it up again. As soon as you start it up again, it comes right out. It's amazing. I don't know how it does it, but it does it. So when you want to use this type of bait, by far, you want to keep that soft plastic on longer and not worry about it sliding down and everything. Definitely go with the little four-inch zip tie. Now, like I said, I covered clear water and stained water. 
my two favorites, like I said. I mean, you can use black, you know, you can use the blue black. I like to use green pumpkin in the clear and stain muddy water, chartreuse white. You can't go wrong with any of these baits. Now, like I said, changing the snap is easy. You just go to a Danielson size three or, a, uh, or the egg snap from decoy, you know, wh whatever you want to do. Just match up, match up basically what you have as far as size of a snap. It's usually anywhere between two and three, depending on what kind of vibration you want, okay? Now for me, I know a lot of guys like to use a monster rod. I like to keep it simple. This rod right up here, being that I'm up in the Northeast, I'm not in Florida, I'm not in Texas, not in California. I love and highly recommend using a G Loomis, okay, the Moss back. The Mossy back is absolutely unbelievable. This is a BCR803 extra fast action, okay? It has plenty of backbone to get them out. It, the throb on the end of this tip is phenomenal. I mean, you feel it just going, bum, 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 when you get that vibration motion going and you feel it in your rod, you know you're using the right rod for it. And it's got plenty of meat to pull them out. It's only a 6'8, it's only a six foot eight rod. But for the fishing up here, you don't really need those big meat sticks, you know, those those crazy rods to get a big bass gun up here. Our biggest up here, you know, I, I fish, you know, Champlain and Potomac and the Hudson River and all these places where big large mouth. I mean, you, you come across a six or a seven, which is good, but very, very rarely, you can get four pounders or five pounders out with no problem with this rod. And I like to pair it up with a TDZ 103HL. It's a seven, uh, I think it's a six, three to one, six, three to one gear ratio. Uh, might be a seven, three to one. I haven't read the box in a while, believe me. And, uh, and it's a phenomenal combination. Now line, 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. I firmly believe 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon is the way to go. I use uh, Vicious. Vicious is one of my favorite lines. I like the way it cuts through. It's very clear. It sl slides down the, uh, the water column very, very nice. I don't believe the fish sees it as much. I mean, I've used other types of fluorocarbon and for some reason, the sensitivity on Vicious is unbelievable. Uh, you know, of course it's got no stretch, you know, but it sinks nice. Um, I will use braid, you know, when I'm in really, really thick, heavy situations, and especially when I know there's pike and pickerel in the aerial, uh, area, I will use the braid. But for the most part, I like to just stick with the fluorocarbon, but 17 to 20 is absolute key. I mean, 20 pound is great. Uh, that's what uh, Brett Hike uses. Brett Hike likes to use the, um, um, forget the name of the company right now, but uh, yeah, Sunline, he likes to use that Sunline Sniper, 20 pound fluoro, and that's excellent. You choose what you want to work with. You know, you don't have to stick by manufacturer or whatever. You, you go with what you like to work with. But key fishing ingredients is be confident with whatever you're throwing. You know, when you throw it, have confidence in it. Throw it for a whole day. Even if you don't get one fish, throw it for a whole day just to figure out the actions. Change up your retrieves. You know, let it die down, change up your colors, you know, try something different. You don't have to use a swim bait tail, try a different kind of tail, you know, try other kind of soft plastics. The soft plastics that come with the package in general are great to use. There's nothing wrong with using them, the two little twin tails, they're fine. But if you really want to like experiment with it, buy whatever you like, put it on nice and secure and go fishing and go catch a big one, okay? Because uh, right now, you're missing out on some really, really good strikes if you're not throwing a chatterbait because they really do uh, call out the big dogs, all right? So uh, I hope you like this segment. Uh, I want to talk next time a little bit about maybe jerk baits or crank baits or whatever else. Good luck on the water. Just get out there and get them, all right? We'll, uh, we'll see you again.